Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com, where I'll help you design smarter, not harder. Let's check out my three favorite go-to image treatments using some beautiful textures. I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this, from this to this, and from this to this. To do all that fun stuff, we're gonna be using these two texture kits. That is my aged photocopy textures and my printer noise textures. Now you can use whatever textures you want to really, whatever you think fits in place of these, but I've structured this video around these two of my texture kits. I just dropped them both on my site and I highly, highly recommend you pick one or both of these up. I mean it when I say that this is the last set of textures you'll ever need. I use these every day and I think you will too. Anyway, let's get to it. The first image treatment we got here is this super lo-fi photocopy effect. This one's all reliable, right? We can't get enough of that photocopy Xerox look, but I really like how lo-fi this effect is in particular. So let me show you how to make it. I've got my sample image here, and the absolute first thing we're gonna do is slap some textures on this. As you can see, this kit is not only full of really interesting scan textures, but it's also got all of your basics as well. I'm gonna start with texture 10 and texture 34. I'm using these because they have that line to print effect, which is really, really cool and it helps us achieve that photocopy effect. So I'm gonna scale these up to size of our image. And from here, now we just wanna mess with the blending modes of these textures. I recommend using either screen overlay or hard light, but you can really use uh, whatever you experiment with that looks cool with the photo at hand. So use whatever you think fits. I'm gonna go ahead and use overlay on this sort of grayish texture. And I choose that because it is a pretty neutral texture. It's a neutral gray and also it's got no color to it. So when I overlay, this on the image is not gonna mess with the color of the image. So that really punches in the scan texture on this image. And for the second texture here, I'm gonna set this to hard light and that's gonna really obscure the image. But don't worry, it's all part of the effect. I'm gonna go ahead and enter the levels of this texture here by using Command L on my keyboard. And I just wanna drag these highlights in a bit so we get a brighter effect on our image. Cool, so now let's select all of these three layers by holding down Command on our keyboard. And we'll just make this all into a smart object. So I'll right click and convert to smart object. So if I zoom in here, you can see just how detailed these textures are, which is great for many things. Obviously these are very high quality textures, but it's a bit detrimental to this specific effect. And I'll show you why in just a second here. Since this is a pretty lo-fi effect, we don't want all of those details in here. So what we're gonna do is go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and just blur this by a few pixels. I'm going with four here. And by the way, I'm using my classic document size, which is 16 by 20 inches at 300 DPI. That is very important to know for this step and the next step, whatever pixel value you choose for the Gaussian blur and any other effects is going to change aesthetically depending on your document's DPI. So as always, I recommend you just work in 300 DPI. So after blurring this, we're just gonna make sure that our color palette is black to white. And we can do that by pressing D on our keyboard. That's gonna reset our color palette and then go up to filter filter gallery and we can use our trusty stamp here so stamp is in the sketch folder of the filter gallery that is the only effect that we're going to need to finish this off so obviously go ahead and play with these settings to your liking i like to use a pretty low smoothness and be on the lower end of the light dark balance but that is also going to depend entirely on what image you're using so just keep that in mind and experiment with this to your liking these are the settings that i'm going for i'll press ok on this and boom that's pretty delicious and we can always finish this off with a nice paper texture so i'm going to drag one in for my printer noise textures here scale that up to size and set that to screen it's pretty sick this one's more of a wild card but it's always a cool look especially on photo shoots where you're going for more of a vintage print look here's how we make it i'm using this photo from my boy with dodd's photo shoot so shout out to him and this model for absolutely killing it once again the first thing i'm doing is dragging texture in here there are two specific kinds of texture that i want in here one is more of a photocopy-esque texture and the other a blown out halftone texture both of which we can find in my printer noise texture kit so i'm going to drag in 36 for that slight photocopy texture look and and 61 for that halftone grain detail, which I'm gonna zoom in here in just a second and show you what I mean. Tesher's got that sort of halftone pattern quality, which is really, really cool and helps us achieve the desired effect. And I'm just gonna set these both to overlay. So I'll select both of these and just put them on overlay. And that's going to really ingrain the texture into the photo here. So if I zoom in, you can see that even better without the textures versus with a whole world of change really. And that might even be enough for you, but we're gonna go ahead and get really experimental with this effect and create that sort of vintage print look. So this step is pretty important. I'm gonna take all three of these layers and we're gonna put them in a group. So select all of them and then command G to group. I'm just gonna name this photo. And then below that group, you wanna put a blank black layer so you can just make a color fill or a solid color layer 
and set the color to black and just put that below that group. Just make sure it's not inside of the group. Now let's open this group up again and above all of these textures, we're gonna throw in a threshold adjustment. So a threshold looking cool as always, but we really don't want that strict black and white effect. We want more of a harsh contrast effect. And we can do that by isolating the black parts of this threshold look onto our image below. So if we set the blend mode of this to darken, it's gonna do just that. So now we have the black of the threshold on top of the original image. And of course we're free to play with the threshold level on this. So I don't want too contrasted of an effect down here is a little too much. I'm gonna drag it a bit to the left. So around here looks really, really cool. And these textures down here are doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Actually, if I turn those off, you can see what the effect would look like without them. So. Not as pretty. Let's turn those back on. And you can even stop here, but I'm gonna take this a step further. We're gonna go into the layer styles of this group that we made up here and drag the black end of the current layer blend if option to the right just a little bit. And then we'll press okay on this layer style. That's gonna remove all the black on this image. If I turn off our black background here, we can see exactly what that did. It kind of got us this grainy pixelated fade out on the image. Obviously we have the black background here, so we don't see that, but that is pretty crucial to the next step. So next up, I'm gonna take this photo group that we just used the blend if on and put that into another group. So just by pressing command G on my keyboard, I group that group, and then we'll go into the layer styles of this group and add a drop shadow. So these are the parameters I'm using. This is what I think looks best, especially for the image I have at hand. But of course you can mess around with this to your liking. So I'm using a pretty dark gray for the color of the drop shadow. You can of course use whatever color you like. There's some cool variations. If you do something more colorful, like a brown, green, whatever, things like that, that's all something you can experiment with. I'm just gonna stick with a dark gray here. Then I've just got the distance on one, the spread on 100, and the size on one. And that's good to go. I'll press OK on this. That's some pretty cool stuff. It's sort of reminiscent of a really bad print, which I really like the look of for some reason. We can also go back into the photo group here and adjust the photo to our liking. So I'm gonna add a levels right above the threshold because I wanna make this image a bit brighter. So I'll drag the midtones to the left. However, I just wanted to affect the luminosity of the colors. So I'm gonna set the blend mode of this levels to luminosity. And that looks pretty damn cool. And to top it all off, I'm gonna throw on a texture from my Age Photocopy Texture Kit. I'm using Texture 34 again because this texture is just so fire. I'm gonna set that to lighten and just decrease the opacity a bit. And bang, that is a damn cool effect. And by the way, you could throw any image you want in here. So after you've done all these steps, it's pretty much a template now. So if you wanted to test this out on a different image, I can just throw that image right into the same group just above the other image we first had in there. And boom, we've got that same effect on a new image. And all we have to do is drag it in there. Let's finally move on to the third effect. This one is pretty simple and sometimes simple is all you need. So you already know what the first step is, don't you? We're throwing some textures on top of our image. This is all up to your discretion. This effect has a little more creative leg room in terms of what textures you wanna throw on top of here. I'm going to be using my texture 34 and 35 from my age photocopy texture kit. I'm gonna drag those in here. And then once I scale these up to size, I'm just gonna play around with the blend modes and opacity of these textures to get it looking just right. So this is something we're gonna come back to later. So you don't need to spend much time on it right now, but I'm just gonna set this first layer to screen. I'll turn the opacity down a bit. We'll go for like, I don't know, 60 or something. And then the second texture, I'm gonna set that to lighten. And I'm also going to turn the opacity down on this one. That adds some really nice texture to this image. But if I want to punch it in a bit more, what I can do is duplicate any of these textures. So I'll select texture 35 here and duplicate that with command J. And I'll just set that to overlay. And we're adding that really detailed and desired texture. But since this is a bit of a darker texture, it's darkening the image a bit as well. But we can get around that by setting this to more of a neutral gray. So I'll open up the levels panel with command L. And I'll just drag this mid-tone slider to the middle of this distribution here. And that's going to bring this texture to more of a neutral gray. So I'll press okay on that and I'll just turn the opacity down a bit on this texture as well. And now we're going back to an old reliable. We're gonna use a gradient map on this. So I'll go into our adjustments and throw on a gradient map. We're gonna be doing something super, super simple. I'll open up the gradient map here and I just wanna add one color into the midtones. This could be absolutely whatever color you want. I personally really, really like a faded blue. And if you've been subscribed to this channel for long enough, you already knew that. Cool, so that's looking good to me. I'll press okay on this. And I might even wanna darken the image a bit so that this effect is not so faded out. So I'll make a levels adjustment right under this gradient map here. 
and I'll just bring in the spread a little bit for a tighter contrast on the image. This looks great, but I want to slap just one more adjustment on here. So right above the gradient map, I'm going to choose another adjustment. It's going to be the selective color adjustment. And the only box you want to play with here is the neutrals. So just make sure you're on neutrals. The first thing I do usually is turn the black down to blow out the midtones a little bit, which is just a cool effect that I personally like. And then you can go ahead and mess with any of these to dial in the color that you want. So this just gives us a little bit more control into the detail of the color on this artwork i'm pretty satisfied with this i think that looks pretty amazing and that's really it guys i hope you enjoyed this video go make some cool graphics go pick up my age photocopy and printer noise textures available on my website now if you made it this far i'm sliding you a discount use the code youtube 15 at checkout for 15 percent off your order if you learned something please like the video if you like me subscribe to the channel i post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer i'll see you in the next one peace out